Ah, Jimmy Tierney, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Now, head coach of McKendry University, where is McKendry? It's in a small town called Lebanon, Illinois, and it's in the southern part of the state, but very close to St. Louis, just about a half hour from St. Louis, Missouri. And um, yeah, it's a great spot to be. Well, listen, you're one of those coaches that I think is just um, highly respected amongst the the fraternity in America, especially, you know, those that, that know coaching um, hold you in a very high regard and, and you've had a, an incredible career. So, um, you know, congrats on that anyway. Well, thanks. That's very kind of you to say. And uh, I guess I've been around for a while and, you know, made a lot of good uh, connections and developed a lot of great relationships within the coaching community. So it's uh, yeah. been quite a journey. Yeah, tell, take us through kind of the, the steps along the way, kind of where it started and, and how you got to here right now. Yeah, well, I, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky and, and uh, swam actually at Lakeside Swim Club where I ended up coaching for six years mm -hmm. right out of college. And um, that was a tremendous experience. And um, if anybody's ever been to the, the famous quarry uh, in Louisville where Lakeside has its home, it's a... Uh, it's a wonderful place to be, a great place to grow up. And um, I was very fortunate because I got to experience two tremendous coaching um, stints down there. One was Dennis Persley, who mm -hmm. uh, uh, Danny was uh, my coach for most of my high school years and, and even a little bit into college when I still trained there a little bit uh, while going to school at Louisville. Um, and he sort of helped resurrect the Lakeside program that was um, a little bit broken apart when there was a coaching change at one point. Um, and all the guys that swam during that time still revered Denny uh, quite a bit. And, and then he was followed by his assistant at the time, Coach Bill Peake, um, who unfortunately passed away way too young. And uh, Bill was also a tremendous coach. And in my eyes might have been a, a hall of famer at some point if he kept going he was he was incredible he was the actual coach at the time um in 1981 when, when mary t um set her mm. world records at in brown deer wisconsin but um mm. so that 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 was just a, a a great experience and and then um you know some shifting coaches i was the head age group coach at one point there and and then um a new coaching group came in and it was time for me to move on and so I spent two years at Southern Illinois University, actually not far from where I am right now, mm -hmm. um, just about an hour and a half away. And um, that was wonderful. That was my first college experience and uh, worked under a guy named Doug Ingram, who was um, sort of an icon in the swimming community at the time and right. uh, well-respected internationally for a lot of his, his uh, work uh, with USA Swimming and, and Olympics and all that kind of, th kind of thing. And just gave me a little bit of taste of, of college swimming and, and um, uh, working with some internationals, which was new to me at the time as well. So that, that was a lot of fun. And, um, um, and then uh, I went up to Northwestern University and, and mm. you know, spent a long time there. Um, and that was very unique because um, at the time there were only, there were a head coach on each side, Bob Grosseth and Kathy Wickstrand, and I was the only assistant. So I don't know of any other program in the country, at least that I am aware of, that had two head coaches and one assistant. And so I kind of just mm. moved back and forth. And, you know, at times I had a co-ed group that I trained, you know, but there was different meet schedules at times, um, different trips. And, you know, so it, it was a crazy experience, but a wonderful <laughs> experience. And, and um, yeah, I was there until eight years ago when I ended up coming down here and and um starting the program here at, at mckendry university so um um you know all wonderful experiences all um i was blessed with just tremendous people um you know i got to work with and coach along the way and um but this one was brand new for me because i'd never started a program before um mm -hmm. and it was really cool because um, not only was the athletic director very influential in bringing me here, but the former president, um, Dr. Jim Dennis, was a former swimmer and swimming coach. So mm. he actually worked under Peter Dalen at USC for a few years. And um, 
uh, decided to go into, you know, education and administration. And so he was the president at McKendree and he still had a passion for swimming and still knew swimming, had friends in the sport, um, the Furness brothers and the bottoms. And, you know, there were a lot of people that had USC connections that he was still, you know, close with. And so, um, so that was kind of neat to have a president that, you know, wanted swimming and wanted, you know, and not only that, but wanted us to be successful. So that was a really cool situation, but they didn't have a pool. So, you know, yeah, I was going to say that, you know, you don't often hear of um, programs uh, starting up this late. They usually, they usually talk about um, cutting programs. You know, we hear about that often. So this is kind of exactly. unique in the fact that they, they start, they didn't have a pool, Jimmy. No, no. And that's why, you know, they had thought of starting a program earlier, but you know, they, they decided let's wait till we get a facility. And, mm. you know, they had some other sports that were traveling a bit, you know, relatively far to get to a facility to train and and um they just said no let's let's wait and let's do it right and um you know now we have a, a recplex that's got ice hockey rinks and and um so we have ice hockey water polo and swimming and diving in our our building and wow. um um so yeah we're, we're very very fortunate and uh wow. is, is it men's and women's it is it is okay. yeah so um yeah, everything's co-ed. Everything that I do with the team is co-ed. And, you know, we obviously in Division Two championships and everything are all together. So, um, you know, I don't see much reason to kind of have things separate. We sort of like to consider ourselves as one big team. Um, yeah. That's kind of how we operate. So what about scholarships? Are you, are you do you give any scholarship? We do have scholarships and, um, you know, we're I think we're using them pretty well. We there was kind of a stair-stepping um process over time to kind of get me up to to the high level and you know make it so that we could be competitive in division two and so um yeah i'm very fortunate so they're they're giving me a lot of resources to work with and and the opportunity to bring in um you know uh, a good group of talented swimmers and and a very diverse group which i think is is very cool i mean that was one of my really the driving points was because I thought, okay, I could create a program where there's going to be 30 plus new opportunities for male swimmers, mm. um, which I thought was huge and female as well. But, you know, the need obviously was probably more for male where in a lot of places in division one, they limit, you know, the number of athletes that, you know, they have in their program. So right. um, I thought this would be great. You know, we could have a lot more people, having that opportunity to be a part of college swimming and, and, and hopefully do some great things. And, and um, I certainly didn't expect some of the top end success that we've had when I first started it. I, um, you know, I went to my first nationals. It was in Indianapolis. I drove there the year before when I was putting the program together and, and watched Queens win one of their titles. And I thought, mm. man, they're, you know, I, I don't know if we could ever get close to that. And, uh, um, but you know, we, we had some, some, uh, wonderful people come in and some very talented, motivated people. And we, you know, we pushed ourselves up there pretty good. I think for those that don't know, Jimmy, what, what's the difference between a division one and a division two? What, why do they have the different divisions? I, I mean, especially, you know, foreign people that are listening to this or families, you know, moms and dads, they don't really understand the difference between the, these different divisions to talk to us about the, the specific differences. Well, I think, I think some of it is, is, some, you know, is resources, you know, um, you know, more the division one, not all of them, but more the division one have, you know, um, you know, basketball and football revenue generating, you know, mm. type sports and, and um, you know, just, more resources, usually larger schools. Um, mm -hmm. So more division two and three or smaller schools, um, you know, not having a, you know, 30 to whatever, 60,000 seat football stadium to help, you know, bring in revenue and so forth. And so now division two has scholarships, which division three, of course, doesn't have athletic scholarships. They mm -hmm. have other type of aid, but um, um it, it's it's just a different business model right and um you know division two schools will start swimming programs or or athletic teams in general to make money um and you don't really think of that with division one right uh, usually programs cost money but 
um, you know, the model in, in a lot of the lower divisions are you're going to bring in a lot of people, you know, a lot of students will, you know, be paying their tuition and so forth. And, and um, you know, it, it actually can help generate revenue and, and help the schools be very successful. I mean, we have, I think we have 36 or 37 sports right now. Wow. And, and wow. under 2000 students. So, you know, oh, wow. there's, yeah, athletics is a big deal at McKendree, which which is kind of fun. So, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. But, How did you uh, go about selling the the first few teams that were coming through, Jimmy? In yeah. terms of like the the, the vision, you know, it, it was kind of crazy because again, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. I was just mm -hmm. kind of winging it a little bit, and and uh, um, I you know kept reminding myself of the old adage, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time, kind of thing, and. And um, I, I had a lot of good local help, some great people like Bob Rettle at Edwardsville, who's also the Ozark chair. He was helping me just get navigated, you know, locally and and um, uh, and a lot of the other coaches, Mary Liston and, you know, the coaches at Clayton Shaw Park. They were all very, very welcoming and, and uh, you know, invited me to their pool decks and and, uh, you know, but the ironic thing is, is that I didn't get a lot of local attention the first couple of years. Mm. Um, you know, I got more summers from Texas and Alaska than I did Illinois or Missouri. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, it drove home, you know, kind of, again, that, that idea that, you know, um, swimmers or maybe athletes in general just are looking for an opportunity and looking for a place to be wanted. Right. Right. And, and I think that's something that we did early on. Um, it didn't matter if somebody came to visit us, we treated them all well, treated them with respect. Um, it didn't matter whether they were a potential NCAA scorer or a walk on athlete. You know, we welcomed them with open arms. The team treated them well. We didn't have the team at the very beginning, but once I had a team, we, we treated them all the same and, and uh, you know, made them feel, you know, very, very welcome. And, and that's kind of, the nature of the school as well, right? When you're in a smaller school like this, it's it's very much more of that, you know, family type atmosphere and, and mm. smaller classes where they get to know the professors and, and um, you know, uh, it, it's just more of, you know, you walk around campus and people know your name and they're calling mm. out to you. And, and, and that could be faculty staff as well as fellow students. And um, so I, I think that was kind of, uh, uh, you know, a great feeling, I think, when people came on campus. And I think it also helped, even though all these internationals didn't necessarily come and visit us, but we talked about that where, you know, they're not going to get lost um, in a, a huge campus with lots of people and and not get the attention that they needed, maybe, especially mm. if, if English was their second language mm. and they were trying to adapt and, you know, get accustomed to the U.S. and the English language and all that. Um, there was more help, right? And just more people right. around to assist them and, and, you know, walk them through things um, as opposed to just kind of being set on their own. So, um, so I, that I think was, was really, really big. And, yeah. um, and I, and I obviously had help from coaching friends, you know, people that recommended athletes and, um, you know, I had division one coaches like, uh, you know, Dennis Persley when he was at Alabama or Braden Holloway at NC State, you know, they would send me names of people that, you know, that they either weren't going to be able to get or didn't have money for or whatever, mm. you know. Um, and so, you know, people were helping direct people our way. And, and um, you know, but I had very little international, um, you know, connections from Northwestern because we just didn't have that many internationals there at the time. Right. The, mm. the standards are very difficult for especially if they were not, you know, um, English speaking, you know, people and, and, um, it, it was tough to get in. And, um, so I didn't have a lot of contacts, but, you know, now I've got a guy in Brazil, I've got a, a, a person in France, I've got a guy mm. in Italy, you know, all that kind of mm. stuff. And so, um, uh, you know, you just develop those relationships and, and, um, I mean, all of my, I had three swimmers from the Cayman islands, and they all came from David Persley, whose dad was my coach, you know, back mm. in Louisville. And and one came and liked it, and then another came, and then another mm. came. And so, you know, um, that's how it happens, you know, man. That's how it happens on that international scene. That's how that's yeah. how it worked with me and yeah. my Brazilians. You know, you get one, you get another, you get another. But uh, you got an Aussie friend of mine too, Tyson Upton's out there, right? Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, Tyson's been great and uh, he's swimming very, very well and, yeah. and um, um, seems to be happy. His dad was just here visiting and, and mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's our, our, obviously our first swimmer from Australia and, and um, um, you know, I, I love the diversity, you know, I, I, I think it's just exciting yeah. and so cool to have them all mix in and, and get to meet each other. But um, yeah, Tyson was the conference summer of the week uh, a week ago and, oh, nice. and uh, you know, just really coming, coming along great right now. So um, yeah, yeah. It's know. good to see him fitting in and he seems happy. You know, he was, he was at a big school division one and, and came to you and just seems to be a better fit. And, and that's the thing that I tell parents a lot too, is like, look, you, you can have an idea of where you want to swim, but ultimately it's it's beyond that isn't it it's a whole oh, community time. i mean you you spend you spend a fraction of your time in the water and maybe you spend a lot more time with the team but generally you're, you're not with the coaches very often you're you're there for you know with the coaches for about 20 hours a week really and right. the coaches are going to have some influence but generally the outside community is going to have a much broader bigger influence in your life and and how you live and, and your happiness and and um and that that's what i tell parents all the time is like look for a place ultimately where your kid's going to be happy to live and they can, you know, obviously get the study that they want, you know, in terms of the, the, uh, the, the degree that they're looking for, um, the people they want to be in the type of community, the, the weather, the food, the whatever it is, that's going to influence them yeah. in their daily life. It's, it's not just the team itself, right? Yeah. You know, you're 100% correct. You know, and I, and I think on the, um, on the swimming end, I think it's also important to, know where you fit in and you know how important is it for you to have an impact on the team or what mm. level of an impact you know we've got mm -hmm. a couple of division one swimmers you know that had transferred in and and um you know and i'm sure the places that they went ha had a lot of great things about it a lot of positives right. but um you know if you're having an impact on a team you know it does so much for you emotionally and Mm -hmm. and your confidence level and things like that you know and i think it it helps motivate you season to season because you want more of that you know and mm -hmm. um you know we've had swimmers that were walk-on level that ended up being all americans and you know swimming it internationally and um to me that's so cool right that they they came into a program and and maybe they were from a small kind of swimming uh area background or maybe they were from an area that maybe had a lot of swimming, but maybe they just weren't very impactful, you know, mm -hmm. like swimmers that were sectional level, you know, not even junior national level swimmers. And then they come in and they, they start to see that they've, you know, they could be successful and make a difference on a team. Mm -hmm. And then again, it just builds and builds and builds. And, um, you know, th those, those athletes and those people that come through that, that have that type of journey, you know, it's incredibly sat gratifying and, 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 um, you know, so cool to be a part of really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, Jim, yeah. Um, I want to get, I want to get back to something else in terms of what I said earlier, in terms of your, your respect, uh, that you have in the community, the coach community, there's a lot of coaches that listen to this and you're one of those guys that has been through it all, um, and, and been influenced by really good people, like you said, in, in great places. So, you know, for, for younger coaches, um, give us some, some wisdom, Jimmy, give us some, um, you know, some of the knowledge that you've gained over the years in terms of the, the journey, the things that, you know, think you, you think, uh, are good are important to be a great coach. And then, um, maybe there's maybe some of the struggles too, Jimmy, you know, in terms of what we yeah. face as coaches. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think in terms of just like your, your coaching style and all that, you know, when you're younger, um, you know, I think at least for me, I was just this huge open book, just, just taking in everything I could see, read, watch, you know, mm -hmm. and I was the guy, one of those guys on the pool deck that would, you know, eavesdrop on conversations among, you know, great coaches. And um, I think for a while it took me, you know, at least to me longer than I would have hoped to, to sort of figure out what was best for me, right. What fits mm. my personality, my style, my beliefs. Um, you know, I was maybe for a while too willing or too open to say, Oh, I need to try some of this or be like this coach or this coach. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually it was like, okay, I became comfortable with myself and, and, and knew what I believed in. And not that I still don't listen. I still, you know, I still love going to clinics and conferences and soaking up information, but, you know, maybe when you get, you know, as you get more experience, you know how to filter it better. Right. Mm. And say, you know, that's, that's not me. That might be successful for this coach, but that just doesn't fit my, you know, um, what I believe in or my personality. And so I think that's one of the big things is, is you're growing as a coach is, is, um, you know, figuring out what, what elements, you know, people talk about the toolbox, right? What are your tools? Um, you know, certainly not, not, um, it's always helpful, I think, to be able to add tools, right? That, you know, as your skill set gets better and you, you get more developed, but, um, you got to kind of know when to cut things off and block things off a little bit and say, this is me, this is where we're going. And, and, and also trust the process, right? Um, mm. You know, again, when I was younger, I was maybe willing to even divert in season um, because I was not comfortable with where we were going or I had some doubts and I might shift gears a little bit. And that was probably not the best thing. I probably should have just stayed course. And and, you know, you're always making minor adjustments as a coach, but, you know, nothing, um, you know, nothing big. And so I I think that's, you know, that's just important. And and I think you also got to be willing to try something different, too. Um, you know, I've heard of coaches that almost repeat workouts, you know, Mm -hmm. year to year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I think that's kind of a recipe for, for disaster. Not, not that you can't follow them or maybe that you, you know, don't use some of them, of course. But, um, I think when you do that, you stop reading your athletes and you're just going based on this system that maybe worked for you in the past. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you got to uh, every year, is, as you know, is different, right? The athletes are different. Even the same athletes you have might be different year to year because either they, you know, they physically changed, you know, there's other things going on in their life, emotional things, you know, personal things, academics, whatever. Um, and I think you just got to, you just got to be open to, to um, making adjustments uh, that might occur. And it might be just one or two individuals on your squad or a group or whatever, um, and, and being able to adapt a little bit based on yeah. how you read the way they're training and their body language and all that. And, right. uh, so, right. you know, I, I, I just think, you know, that kind of stuff's important. I also think it's important to, um, network as much as possible. Um, I was fortunate because when I first worked for Doug Ingram, he was, you know, hugely involved with, with ASCA and, and USA swimming on some of the high level committees. And I thought that was so exciting, so cool. And I, I just wanted to follow along and, and kind of get involved myself. But, um, I, I think I was, um, very fortunate too, to just be in, in the environment and around people that were highly successful. And it, it took me a while to have the guts to go ask a Mark Schubert or Richard Quick questions about coaching and and um and they were almost always willing and open to help and share Mm -hmm. you know and you know you got to know the timing of it you know you're not gonna maybe stop them on the pool deck at olympic trials while they're working with an athlete or something like that you know it's got to be the right environment and the right time but um coaches to me in this country are so open to sharing at least that that's my experience and um um, you know, I learned a lot from so many great coaches and, and, uh, some of them was, you know, listening to them talk at a, at a clinic or whatever, but, um, you know, I love just going up on the pool deck and saying, Hey, and I, I would usually have one thing that I wanted to ask is that I didn't want to take up too much of their time. And yeah. In some cases they would just chat and chat about it much longer than I anticipated. And so, yeah. so I think that's just another important thing. And, you know, if you get into any of these mentor groups, because ASCA's ASCA's got them, the CSCA's got them. Um, I've even met some great young coaches through these mentor groups and, 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 and they've enriched my coaching experience. Um, So I I think doing that kind of thing is, is extremely helpful. Yeah. I think, you you know, just basically what you're talking about too, is just having a network of people that you can go to, you know, when, when, you want to bounce ideas off or things might be tough or, you know, you've got a problem you want to solve. You, you need that network too of support around you. Don't you? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think that was one of the benefits during COVID too, because there were yeah. so many groups like, you know, get together and, you know, these type of formats and, and share. And, um, I, you know, it was, it was incredibly great learning experience during that period of time. It almost got to the point for me, there was too many options, you know, and I was having to, you know, mm -hmm. cut back on them a little bit, but, you know, I mean, I'm on with, you know, groups set up by Jeff Dugdale and I'm on with a group that Sergio Lopez, you know, set up and whatever. And it's like, um, just a great time to kind of talk about, it doesn't have to be swimming, right? It could be some of the groups I was in, we talked about life, you know, and, yeah. and maybe the life as a coach and, you know, the balances and things like that. So, um, uh, yeah, well, what, I, what I, you might not uh, realize, Jimmy, is you're you're on the number one swimming podcast in the world right now, and you're yeah. just by just by mere fact of that you're here talking, you're sharing with everybody right now. There's, there's um, people all around the world listening to you. As soon as this goes live, that that you're going to have an impact on that. Maybe they they didn't know you before, or didn't know much about you, or didn't know who you were, and 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 these types of things have have massive impacts on coaches now. And I'm I'm proud to be able to do this, but I'm I'm also proud to bring someone in like you to have that type of influence, you know, it's, it's nice. And I think that's, we, we were, we were missing stuff like that. You had to go to conferences in the past to make a connection with Jimmy Tierney, but now you can just turn this on and, and listen. And then maybe someone's going to reach out to you based on what, what you're said here today, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's all really cool how, how open it is. Right. And, yeah. and uh, there's so much access to coaches nowadays and, and uh, right. you know, uh, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, the huge tech guy, you know, growing up and, and I probably missed some things along the way, but knowing all the stuff that you could access now and, yeah. and pick up and, and, um, you know, if you're able to reach out to coaches and, and ask them questions about something they presented, I mean, uh, that's, that's huge, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. that flow of information and sharing of ideas is, is I, I think what's always helped make the coaches in this country, you know, um, successful and, 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 and maybe the same in other countries as well, but, you know, yeah. just knowing the experiences here with, with ASCA and CSCA and the different groups that, that, um, where people are passionate about helping the sport grow and helping the profession, you know, yeah. uh, grow. I think it's, I think it's awesome. Jimmy, I was watching college swimming over the weekend. You couldn't, um, you couldn't, but not see it. And, you know, if you're on social media, it was, it was kind of everywhere. The, the Cal ASU dual meet. I mean, you had dual meets going on all around the country and then there's just fast swimming going on. But the one thing that I noticed, Jimmy, is that, you know, pretty much every college dual meet that was going on, people were suiting up, you know, it, it was, it was race time. It was, it was, everyone was going at it. They're putting the suits on. I mean, that, that's a, an evolution in terms of where we were five, 10 years ago, you would never suit up for a dual meet. And now it seems like everybody's doing it. Um, do you, do you like where that's going? I mean, obviously we're seeing fast times, you know, all the time now, it used to just be like beat down, beat down, you know, work hard, work hard, work hard. You, you would rest for conference and then you would taper for your, for your national meet, you know? Um, but it just seems like everyone's going fast now and they're putting suits on all the time. Do you like that? You know, I, I think you're, I think we're all learning from it for sure. Um, we don't suit up a lot in meets, you know, and, and some of that is just, access to the suits you know mm -hmm. yeah. um i think if i had more availability of suits and, and obviously you know we could suit up in old ones and you know mm -hmm. things like that but um mm -hmm. um you know I, some of the schools obviously have more resources and, and right. probably run through suits a little bit more than others but you know I, th I think you do learn from it we we probably suit up you know more often in practice um and, and just do stuff ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, get that going. And, and I know that maybe to some people sounds a little bit weird. And, and um, um, I, I guess I'm also a little bit old school and that, you know, I'd rather at least be on even footing with the other team. If I'm right. racing somebody, yeah. um, I, I would always ask if, you know, um, if the other team or if I, like this last weekend, I think we had a handful of individuals and usually they were people that needed a qualifying time for conference or just had to see where they were mm. suited in order to, you know, figure out events for conference and things like that. Um, but, um, you know, I think if you got a situation like a Cal and, and, and ASU where they, you know, cause I know they didn't last year and, you know, the, 
at least the score wasn't a competitive beat, right? Because one was right. suited, one wasn't. Um, I'm not saying that's terrible, but I, you know, I'd, I'd rather be equal. And and yeah. this year they did, and you know, obviously it was a heck of a meet. So, um, um, so I, you know, again, I think we're learning things, and and uh, you know, boy, it'd be it'd be nice if there's a way to figure out you know, some point, I know it's not going to happen where suits, you know, get, get a little bit less expensive and yeah, maybe more yeah. affordable and you could get, you know, maybe something that's, I don't know, slightly less than the, your top end suit or something like that, you know, but, yeah. uh, um, but it's, again, it's a great learning experience and, and, uh, um, you know, obviously everybody does it different. Like the only thing to me is tricky is getting the suits on, especially for women, you know, it takes more time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little weird at times cause you're, you know, sometimes when we do it, it's, it's their choice, you know? And so I'll all of a sudden look around the pool and I've got 30 swimmers, you know, not in the pool for 15, 20 minutes. So they've gone to suit up and, and uh, the rest of them are still warming up and getting ready. But you know, the good thing is most of them figure it out. You know, they kind of, uh, some of them go earlier to suit up because they want to do some, you know, speed pace stuff before they go their fast stuff. Others come right out and ready to dive in and go fast. So it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's interesting for me just watching and seeing what different people like to do. Um, yeah. but, um, I had a swimmer a couple years ago, um, from Serbia and, uh, I still love this to this day because, uh, uh, he would come up to me and he, you know, he'd go, coach, watch he goes, they all go suit up me. I not suit up. I still beat him. <laughs> and, uh, he oftentimes would beat the suited guys. That was like his drive and his motivation. And, uh, uh, I, I thought it was kind of cool, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, but you know, again, some people, if they'd rather save and wait on the suit and, you know, but almost everybody does it in training at some point. So it's certainly yeah. not not fresh and brand new but yeah uh, we're definitely definitely shifting to more more training racing and training too and and maybe on that too jimmy is like look you you definitely come from an era and you mentioned some of these coaches by name but like you come from an era an era where working hard was was kind of the expectation and and volume certainly was was a, a foundation of of the work we did um how how are we evolving beyond that how, how are we getting faster you know like if 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 we can't work any harder and we can't really swim much further, how are people getting faster these days from your perspective? Yeah. Well, I think, I think we're smarter about what we're doing and maybe learning more about, um, you know, a, how, how to make our, our swimmers more athletic, you mm -hmm. know, outside and inside the pool. But, yep. you know, there's certainly been an evolution in strength training and, and right. dry land work and all that with, you know, without a doubt. And, For sure. Um, some of the companies that are, you know, uh, what, 10 years ago, probably more, maybe there were hardly any, maybe a little bit longer than that, you know, companies yep. specializing in dry land for swimming and, and yep. developing young swimmers and all that. So that's obviously, you know, kind of a new thing. And, and, um, you know, certainly, you know, uh, and it's been around for a while, but just more race pace swimming and practice, you know, yep. uh, having your body prepared to swim at those speeds that you want to go when, yeah you know, you're trying to race in your, in your major competition. So, um, you know, I think, uh, and I'm, I'm still uh, a big believer of course, and, and, and you got to believe in what you're doing. Right. And, and I think if somebody does a lot of volume and they believe in it and, and they're convinced and that, and it, and they do keep improving, then, then, then that's a good thing, right? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, and it goes both ways. So I think you just got to figure out what works well and, and, um, and how to, whatever you're doing as a coach, you got to make sure that the athletes are instilled with confidence that, you know, this is going to take them where, the, where they're, where they want to go. Right. Yeah. And, and help make them as, as great as possible kind of thing. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I, I know there've been conversations out there about, you know, the, you know, whatever the first 19 second long course 50 or, you know, whatever, like what's it going to take to get to these places. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Really? There's it, been conversations, Jimmy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, but hey, experimenting is good. Number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. got to try different things, you know, right. whether they're kept 
or whether they're discarded, you know, and, and everything, right. In science and, you know, all sorts, I'm sure in, in industry and, and, you know, in medicine and, you know, you, you got to experiment and try things and, and if something doesn't work, you chuck it and, and you try something different. So, um, you know, I, I love it when people are willing to experiment and try different things, you know, and, and, um, you know, with when, like when the USRPT stuff was, was kind of coming out there and, and, you know, a lot of people were critical about it or saying it was great or whatever. To me, it was like, let me see it, you know, let's, let's see what you can learn from it. And, yeah. and may, you know, whether you take something whole or take parts of it, right. um, you know, again, it's all part of the experience. And, and, uh, I, I would never cut something out just, you know, automatically if I've never experienced it or seen it, you know, I want to, I want to see if it can, if it could teach me something or teach my athletes something. And, um, uh, that's why sometimes it's cool to go to some of the clinics when, you know, not only are you hearing things with coaches talk, but you go in the exhibit hall and you look at new pieces of equipment. And I mean, yeah. I, I would always see Richard quick wandering through the exhibit halls and he would, and he might be the only guy at a certain table. And, and I would go, okay, what's he looking at? You know, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. uh, you could see his mind spinning and, and he was always looking for that new edge, that new thing. And, and, um, yeah. but I, th I think it's great, you know, and, you know, if he found it, he, he was willing to share, you know, and, and yeah. uh, so we, yeah. I think we need that, you know, we need, people doing different things, whether extreme or not, you know, but to help us find the path going forward, that's going to make us better. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that I always loved about Richard, the influence he had on me, the biggest impact I would say, and I've, and I've told this many times is that he was always thinking 10 years ahead of where everyone else was thinking, right. you know, and part right. of him walking around the, the hall, right. looking at different gadgets and looking at things is because he's saying, what's the thing that's going to get me 10 years ahead of everyone else before, you know, that time. And so uh, he was, he was just an innovator and he was always, he, he was never satisfied with where he was. He was always saying, well, in 10 years, someone's going to swim this fast. So why don't we think about swimming that fast now? You know? Yeah. And uh, it, yeah. it was always remarkable to me about how he would just put himself in that, in that situation. And here we are, you know, 10 years later, um, you know, for, for any event, if you look back on it, I mean, look at Michael Phelps, for instance, Michael Phelps right. doesn't have a world record anymore. I mean, how bonkers is that to think Crazy. about that, yeah. that Phelps doesn't have a long course world record. I mean, the greatest swimmer in history. I mean, we must've evolved in 10 years from, from Phelps. It's, it's, yeah, you know, it, I know it's wild. It, it really is, you know, and then there's the other anomalies where you have, you know, Mary T's 200 fly time that, you know, still gets top three, you know, right. at, one yeah. of our trials or something, you know, it's like, is she was, she just so mm. far out there at the time or, mm. and I know how she trained. I was around it. And I don't think that many people train like that. There are some, no. but not many. Yeah. Um, but you know, that was crazy. And some of the stuff she did and then, you know, and then she went the great hundred fly as well. That maybe was more stunning than the 205, 200 fly because, mm. The world record was 59 something and she yeah. skipped the 58s to 57 yeah. nine like you yeah. know it's just unheard of kind of thing yeah. and uh um but yeah you know that was you know um a, a lot of training although you know at the time she was with bill peak and you know he probably shifted a little bit more into more race speed kind of stuff for her to you know help help get get her to that level in the hundred but um yeah you know I, I, I'm with you, you know, I, you look at some of the records, you're like, how some of these lasted forever. Um, and certainly some of them, you know, were, were, um, a factor of the full body suits, you know, some of those records that still maybe are hanging from the 08, 09 and, you know, some of those years, but, um, yeah. um, you know, some of the others it's, it, yeah, I agree. Like Phelps, his records aren't there anymore. That's, that's just, yeah. Astounding. Man, that's crazy. So. Um, Jimmy, if you were to be asked right now to to present in a couple of months at, at a conference in, in front of a thousand coaches, let's say, what what would you think you'd want to present on? What where would you feel comfortable? Or what do you think the message that coaches need to hear right now? Um, and I'm just throwing that out there. It was just a question yeah. that came in my head. You know what I mean? So it's like, what what, what do you think needs to be presented on right now? Um, you know, pro 
you know, probably a, a couple of different things, but um, certainly, um, and, and I don't necessarily feel like I'm an expert to this, but, you know, you know, how to be successful in the coaching world that we live in today, right? Yeah, right. Um, you know, things have changed, right? And, and it's a different world. And so, uh, and, and there's obviously some differences between club and college and, and, and certainly some similarities, but, you know, you, you think about, I think about sometimes about some of the um, college coaches, maybe over history that were very, very much, you know, hard driven, mm. hardcore, my way is the only way, you know, kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and literally driving people to success. Right. Yep. And, and it works on, it, it certainly works on, but you know, in, in today's world, right. That, you know, that, that probably is not going to, you know, that coach is probably not going to have a very long career if, if that's the, the tact that they, that they feel like that they're, they need to take to be successful. Right. Um, and then sometimes I even think about the athletes that looked for people like that. Um, and I can't say I've had too many people in the last few years, but over the, over the years, I would have parents that, of recruits that would say, coach, my child needs to be driven. They need to mm. be, you need to ride them hard. You need to mm. crack the whip. And, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, back then they probably, if they, if they needed to, they could look around and say, Oh, well, there's coaches that, that are that type. And, right. you know, maybe yeah. I, I need to go there, but you know, are there that many people like that nowadays? You know, mm. obviously coach could be challenging with the workouts and, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, I think it's more the, yeah interaction with the athlete right and yeah it's definitely shifted hasn't it you know it, it, it yeah. seems it seems like there's been a, a huge shift especially in the last five years for sure yeah without a doubt you know and i think you know not not as many athletes can be driven mentally in a hard way as before uh, we all know about mental health being you know such a huge thing nowadays and and um you know i think i think there's there's you know, more athletes that maybe struggle than, than what we're aware of in some cases. And, and I think you just gotta, um, you know, be a little bit careful about how you, you, um, challenge those athletes nowadays, you know, they've got you know, the academic pressures and social pressures and whatever else is going on that, you know, I'm not an expert of, um, you know, the generational things, but, um, you know, I think athletes need to be, you know, maybe a little bit more often, you know, kind of picked up a little bit and, and, um, you know, given the positive and given the, you know, a little bit of uplifting and confidence building and all that kind of stuff, not that they didn't before, but, um, maybe just a little bit more so now than, than, you know, past generations of, of summers that came along. So, um, kind of knowing that is, I think, important in our, in our profession and, um, um, just really taking an understanding in getting to know people, um, you know, is, is, is huge. Um, because, you know, if you want to have a long career in our, in our sport, then you got to kind of fit in with the world today. Right. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be tossed out pretty quickly. And, yeah, yeah. and I don't think it's just success either. You know, I think it's, you know, the, the athlete reaction to you. And I, you know, I don't even know if, if a lot of schools do the, year-end evaluations like they used to i know a lot of schools have cut that out but um you know the administration is going to hear about whether coaches are sort of taking care of their athletes you know the swimmers and or right. whatever sport and and i think that plays a huge role in the longevity of somebody's career um, yeah you know i really yeah. do but uh um you know i i uh but i think um you know not this is anything new but i would i would really, really strongly encourage young coaches to get um, as proficient in the technical aspects of, of the strokes in the water, mm -hmm. yep. you know, because, you know, it, as we all know, as you the higher up you get, you know, the difference becomes more and more, whether it's be how, how efficient you are in the water, you know, reduction of drag, all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, I think, kind of studying that kind of stuff, videos yep. and yep. working with athletes. And, and I know it's harder sometimes if you've got a big group, you know, if you've got 40 kids and, you know, but still, I think if I was a club coach, I would be hammering drills and hammering efficiency mm -hmm. and, and boy, I'd be teaching them 
uh, developing their kick. Um, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of kids come through club programs in high schools and, and have weak kicks because they yeah. don't, they don't kick at all. And I, mm-hmm. I've never quite understood that, but uh, yeah. um, you know, I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly that your legs are your biggest muscle group. Those things need to be trained. And if they're trained well, uh, you know, you you can hold up in in any race. You know, if if you you, you need legs these days for everything. You know, yeah, and yeah, real good, yeah. especially short course. You need you need those underwaters too, which uh, yeah. needs to be developed at a young age. Without a doubt, I mean, there are not many, you know, high end swimmers that are successful without some type of great leg kick no. underwater or something right. like that. Yeah, right. you, it it limits you without a doubt. You know, and so um, trying to develop that, I think, is is huge. So. Um, yeah, boy, I'd be trying to figure out all sorts of different dolphin type actions and motions mm-hmm. and, you know, um, playing games with them or they, you know, fish type motions underwater. Who knows? Like, yep. you know, throwing coins on the bottom of the pool at the other end and say, all right, go, you know, whoever gets the most money, you know, whatever you mm-hmm. keep it or you get out of practice. But just make help develop, you know, the the fish style movements of for young swimmers and 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 not just do it with training, but do it with fun stuff and games and, and just getting them engaged in it and, you know, developing those skills that are going to make them great underwater type swimmers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, they did that at Auburn with the football team. They were, you throw money at them and they'll go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm messing around. Um, now listen, uh, why, why college of a club for you? Why did you go that route? You know, it was just time for a change. And um, I mean, when I was younger, I thought I was going to be a club coach for, you know, for my career. Um, but, um, you know, when I was at Lakeside, they, they, um, all the guys that I coached with moved on and, and they brought in somebody different who was, you know, uh, going to, you know, bring in their staff and do something new. And so I just said, all right, what's, what else is out there for me? And, and, um, you know, um, I always thought college swimming was exciting, but I didn't have any plans on going there. And, and, um, you know, when I started to look, you know, I saw an opening at, at Southern Illinois and, and, um, you know, I thought, well, you know, I, Hey, it doesn't hurt to maybe pick up a master's, get a master's degree. And, you know, maybe that could help me down the road. And, and, um, and once I got into it, you know, I was kind of hooked. So, um, but I, you know, I love coaching. I still enjoy coaching younger kids and, and, uh, enjoy, you know, being around them and watching them develop. And, and, um, but, uh, you know, I love the team aspect and, um, uh, I grew up a huge college basketball fan. I love mm-hmm. college football. Now I, I love the team competition and all that. So obviously college swimming brings that a little bit more than, than club swimming. So, um, yeah. You know, and uh, and I love being on a college campus and and all the you know the culture and the and so forth that goes with it too. I think it's a you know helps keep you young a little bit. You know, keeps you keeps you going, mm-hmm. which I think yeah. is pretty neat. So, well, Jimmy, yeah, uh, you listen, you're one of the good guys. You've had a massive influence on generations of, of kids, and I'm sure you probably get that from people that come back and you know have gone on to careers. And, and thank you for that. So, uh, yeah, um, amazing career so far, and it's going to continue. Now, if anyone wants to get a hold of you to learn more about your school at McKendry. What can they do? Well, it's easy to go online, you know, and, and, you know, our, our emails and phone numbers are, are on our webpage at McKendry, you know, dot edu. And, and, uh, um, you know, the athletic pages kind of have all of our, um, you know, our stories and our, our history and all that. And, and, and Facebook is, you know, easy. If you want to just sort of learn about the, sort of the the climate of the team you know and what Mm. they're like and you know Mm. my my captains and my staff they do a great job of putting things up and videos and and um you know just a lot of information which i think is is very helpful and that's just bearcat swim and dive and um you know um but yeah it's not that hard to to learn about all that kind of stuff but you know i talk to people on the phone quite often and and answer emails so anybody that wants to reach out and, and learn more about us, I'm, I'm happy to share. So I love uh, it. I love it. Yeah, Good stuff. Yeah. But, it's going to be uh, a fun year, Jimmy, with, with the trials and, you know, well, well, you've got, you know, you know, national championships, then you got your trials and then you got your Olympic games. It's going to be a massive year for swimming, actually world championships in a couple of weeks. I'm going, I'm going <laughs> no, to go to the world champ. So it's, it's all happening it's, this year. It is. It's unbelievable, you know, and, and, um, it's an exciting time. And, you know, uh, 
fortunate enough to have a guy that'll be at trials and, and Jack Lustig and the, and the butterflies and, and nice. um, you know, who knows, maybe we'll pick up some others and I've got internationals in their own countries, you know, trying to mm. make different teams. And, and so, yeah, it's, it, boy, I tell you what, it, it, it keeps you, your mind just spinning right as a coach. And mm. um, I guess the only negative is there's no real break, you know, it's like, there's always mm. something next, you know, that you got to right. shift to, but um right. But that's okay. You know, it's, uh, I, I love Olympic gear. I love trials and, you know, going to, um, Indianapolis in the, in the, you know, the Colt stadium is going to be, you know, yeah. really amazing. I still don't quite know what it's going to look and feel like, but I, mm. um, but I, but I can't wait. And, um, you know, so yeah, it's going to be exciting time. And, yeah. you know, obviously we've got our championships coming up, just our conference in three weeks. And then, and then NCAA's mid March, um, nice. Um, at the spire this year and and um so yeah it's it's exciting and and uh you know anxious to see what kind of successes we're going to have yeah good stuff well thanks jimmy i appreciate your time today man and i uh, look forward to seeing you on the pool deck soon okay thanks so much for having me it was a pleasure to be here and uh kind of honored to be selected so thank you i appreciate it thanks jimmy take care all right all the all best right.